Yo guys, what's up? Joe here, the guy who accidentally cut the final shot of The Sopranos out, and I had to talk about UFC 281, and there's a lot to talk about, so enough of it. Let's get to the fight. Let it go! Because our main event, we had Israel Adesanya, Izzy, versus Alex Pajeda. It's honestly kind of an admirable level of pettiness, as Pajeda chased Adesanya from one sport to another just to sun him up again. I'm going to be honest. I think this fight kind of sucked. It was really boring. Another boring AZ performance. In my opinion, for the most part, he's been re really boring of late. He just hasn't shown the urgency. A lot of clinching, a lot of just tying up, holding, very content, which is kind of coasting. And uh, uh, this fight kind of was like that, man. It was, uh, it was a little rough. Um, but the first round, though, I will say, here's some moments that kind of caught my eye. Because uh, there were some moments there that made it not as boring as the other ones, but still a little boring, I think. Um, so, first round, is he blasts Pajeda at the very end of the round with, like, right hand that stuns and a left hook that clobbers him. And, uh, okay. I mean, I thought that was Izzy won that round, personally. Second round, Pajeda actually won the round of the striking and got a last second takedown. It was awesome. It was insane. Um, just like, oh, what? Like, you know, Marvin Vittori in shambles right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Kind of. Um, third note, the third round and fourth round was just all Izzy, though. Th uh, the, the big thing to note was it was in round three, Izzy got a takedown and just kind of controlled the whole fight from on top, just kind of battering him. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it is. Round four, Peta was super gassed, and it was just like, all right, cool. Here's Izzy going to coast two rounds on us. Here it is. You know. Here we go, kind of thing. But Izzy got caught in that final round. He's hurt bad. He gets walloped hard. He gets swarmed on. And they call the fight. Alex Pajeda and is your new champ, and Robert Whitaker is maniacally laughing somewhere. I'm calling it. Um, so I've heard online, I've seen on Twitter, big controversy with this one. Because they call it a, a, an a early stoppage. Okay. For me, this is my opinion. It's no question. There's no question. It's undeniable to me. This is a good stoppage. Izzy was literally out on his feet. He's he's out. Like, the only thing that that's didn't happen, his eyes are like, one eye's looking at him and the other eye's looking at Rick. You know, like the Rick James thing. And um, he's out. His eyes are gone. He's just out of it completely and yeah man uh i i think the only thing that people want to see like more violence and that's sure there's time on the clock you could have let it gone on but he would have caused some really bad damage from a guy like guy like him clobbering him it wasn't like a fight earlier i know i seen people go what about the fight earlier no it's a little different a lot different big time different not this one he was to eating him. He's eating him too. His hands weren't up. He's trying to dodge him, but he's just out. So he's just getting clobbered still. No, I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not an Adesanya fan, but I don't want to see him get hurt like that. He's got a family. He's got all, he's got a life ahead of him, man. He, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to send the guy to a, a longer stay in the hospital if he don't need to be. UFC don't pay enough money to like support that kind of lifestyle, man. You know, like let him be healthy. That's, this is me. Pro fighter safety all the way. So I don't talk about uh, all that noise. So let's get to the co-main event, which was Zhang Wailei versus Carlos Esparza, the champion. Um, so real quick, I'm going to be real quick on this co-main event here. So Carlos Esparza, she's coming in, going to shut down these doubters, defend her title against Zhang Wailei. Didn't happen, you know. Uh, Zhang Wailei won the first round, and it looked over for the champ because, historically speaking, she tends to struggle when she has a little bit of adversity and she has to overcome things and I'm not being harsh or rude if you look historically it's just kind of a thing that's happened with her career we, we kind of knew that you know and that happened basically uh Zhang stopped another takedown reversed it kind of locked her legs up in like a back crucifix um and got a rear naked choke two-time champ kind of kind of an easy like easy one to call I felt like going into it 
Um, nothing against the former champion, of course, but it just, just seems like a rough matchup for her, man. Felt, felt bad. And once again, I talked about it last week on what we think we can do for this future of the division. Uh, so I'm going to say this, though, because I saw some Twitter, and I agree. I'm, I'm, for once, I'm agreeing with Twitter, in, in a sense. Um, I saw people saying that Rose, they're so like over the idea of Rose getting another title shot. Yes, I, I agree. Like, uh, I, I've heard, I saw some people kind of clamor for it. No, no, I, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think she's in a position anywhere to go for a title shot. Like, we got we to have this division move. We can't just have the same three, four people fight for the belts over and over and over again. And that's not my sound hypocritical coming from me because I'm down for Figgy and Moreno to fight a thousand times, personally. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Um, and then let's talk about the fight of the night. Michael Chandler, Dustin Poirier. We all knew it was going to be fight of the night, and it was. It's kind of hard to not say a Michael Chandler fight's not going to be fight of the night at this point. It's like Gaethje picking Gaethje fight to be boring. So out the jump, both dudes just swing in leather, letting it just rip. Chandler has the early advantage, I felt like. I thought he was actually doing pretty well. He even hurts. He even catches Dustin. He kind of hurt him. Dustin's defending well. Uh, but a big counter right hand, and Dustin's back in this as Chandler gets put on his ass. Uh, and at this point, Dustin's lighting him up, just p- putting the hands on him, basically. Just light, lighting him up. And uh, that nose gets splattered. He's, you know, Chandler's nose, of course, is one that gets splattered. It gets splattered. We, I saw it, like, in real time, and I went, we all went, whoa! It was, it was super awesome, actually. Big fan of violence in this household. And that was crazy. Um, but big second round for Chandler, though, man. Chandler... He comes out, gets a big takedown, and just kind of dominates from top position. He's bleeding all over the place. It don't even matter. And Dustin's bleeding a little bit from all over the place. Does like they're all just kind of just blood going everywhere. Very, very fight clubby. You don't know where I've been, kind of thing. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, Chandler, did, you know, um, some controversy in this round because Chandler went fishing in this round. He was he he got called out for fish hooking Dustin Poirier. And he definitely did it. We we saw it live, and we were like, there's no way Michael Chandler doing that? No, there's no way. No way. No, he was. Like, you see it, like, clear as day in the replay. He he definitely fish hooked him. It's ew, bad. Reminds me of uh, Brian Caraway, Eric Perez, years ago, when I saw Brian Caraway do it live, and I was like, what? Getting, getting fish hooked, by the way, sucks. I got fish hooked once. It's It's terrible. I, uh, it sucks so bad. <laughs> Third round, though, Chandler, be looking a little tired, and Dustin just takes full advantage. He counters a big takedown, and he, after pressuring him on the feet with big strikes, and he, after reversing that takedown, he just takes the back, and it's over. He sinks in that rear naked choke. Big fight win for him. And honestly, at this point, I want a Poye Dariush fight, since Benny is sadly not getting a title shot. Make it happen, UFC. So there's a lot more that happened on this card, right? There's a ton. This card was actually really, really, really good. Frankie Edgar got his retirement match. It was heartbreaking, man. He got it ended quickly by a big Chris Gutierrez knee. Sad ending for the legend, but at least he got a big standing ovation on the way out. Good luck in retirement, buddy. You're one of my all-time favorites. I, I hope I hope it's great, bud. Um, Claudio Puyez got smashed on by Dan Hooker completely in the opening fight of the main card. He was out of the fight the entire time, just timid in the striking is how I describe it. I think I saw him throw one strike, like in the first round, and like four kicks in the third, the second round, excuse, I should say. Just couldn't good, couldn't do it. Once he couldn't get a takedown reliably, he just kind of butt scooted and went for M and R A rolls, and he couldn't get it. And he just got picked apart on the feet before getting finished by a snap kick up the middle in the second round. Uh, Aaron Blanchfield proved me right. Yes, by showing she's the future of the division. She's the future of 125 pounds. And she just dominated Molly Meatball. She dominated her so bad that Patty Pimblin don't even want that. Like, it was bad. Just, uh, I think I saw a stat that, if I remember right, I think I saw a stat during the fight where Aaron Blanchfield took no significant strikes. I just, oof. I was on the way to a Kimura victory, but even before the Kimura, she had her in the crucifix, and she's just clobbering her. Like, Molly's face is just all red from, like, the amount of elbows and punches she was taking. Um, they weren't, like, the hugest, biggest shots, but they just accumulation of, like, consistently decent shots. It, it just, it was rough. Like, wow. Big win for Aaron Blenchfield. 
uh, you know, feel bad for her because she's a New York native and the crowd did not cheer her. They were cheering so loudly for Molly and Meatball that they did not hear when they when they said Blanche Fields from New York. Feel bad for her, but great win. And Dominic Reyes lastly got put out by Ryan Spann in the first round with uh, basically a jab. It's a sad fall for the guy who, in my opinion, cleanly beat John Jones, only stopped by a judge who was on his phone and not watching the fight. That's real. That's a true story. Look it up. He was he was on his phone. Look it up. Trust me. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Uh, good card overall, honestly. And uh, but I'll be here next week. You know, I'll be here next week. I'll be here to talk about UFC Fight Night, Lewis versus Spivak. Uh, one thing of note. Go, you, guys, go, you guys should go check out on the main channel the retro review I did for UFC 217. Uh, it was a blast making, and I love the final product. Uh, anyways, I'm Joe with the INC. Thank you for watching.